In retired U.S. Army Colonel William Keegan, he served as the head of the Australian Submarine Testing Program. He's also a defence advisor and strategist and joins us now from Washington, D.C. Uh, Colonel, it's good to have you on the program. The Houthis have shown time and time again that they have the knowledge and know-how to disrupt the waterway. So what's the strategy then of any coalition to counter them? Well, I think it's important if you're going to develop a strategy, you have to look at the big picture of what's really going on. This is not a, just a small activity uh, by the Houthis by themselves, uh, for themselves, because there's nothing really strategically to gain if it's just them. What's going on in the larger view is this is Iran flexing its muscle in multiple locations around the region, uh, whether there's attacks in Iraq, whether there are attacks in Lebanon or Gaza, or in, the, in this case in the Red Sea uh, by the Houthis. Uh, they are exercising uh, their muscle to demonstrate. It is a demonstration of their power in the region and their potential ability to restrict trade and restrict movement uh, through the Suez Canal. It is strategic. It's but, not just a small uh, activity. No, but the focus definitely yes. is at the moment on, the, on that waterway and on that area. And sort of sea power alone is not going to be the answer, is it, from the coalition? Uh, and you can't deal with, if you're going to, you know, mention Iran, you can't deal with Iran on, on, on a, on a multi-regional uh, platform when, there, when it's in so many areas or has influence in so many areas. If you're going to deal with the Houthis, surely you also have to deal with them from their command and control centres on land. Is that something that any coalition at the moment would consider or would they be looking for a UN, a UN mandate on that? Well, I think that there's uh, the reason that the coalition, uh, which is inherently a defensive operation, um, is having difficulty coalescing at the moment is because they don't have a strategic direction on on what you just mentioned specifically. So you're right in that in that case. Uh, and, and in reality, uh, the way to stop it is to uh, basically direct the attacks against the Houthis that are doing that, and also target the IRGC that's supporting them. Uh, I, you have to cut off the the source uh, and exert pressure wherever possible. And in addition to that make it so it's not worth it's not worth it for the Houthis uh, to be a proxy for Iran. Uh, and that, that can be pressure that's brought on the Houthis directly, whether it's command and control and those, those assets that are attacking civilian shipping, or it can be also pressure put directly on uh, Iran, which includes revisiting the sanctions. Uh, of course, we saw uh, during the conflict between uh, Yemen and, and Saudi that the Houthis are a, a resilient uh, force and a resilient group. But in terms of uh, the, the sort of the last 24 hours, you know, when you have a commercial vessel that is told to take strategic uh, or evasive manoeuvres against uh, 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 whatever force is being used by the Houthis. How does a, a, a merchant vessel do that when it doesn't have any armed personnel on the vessel itself and one assumes can only manoeuvre physically, you might say, left or right? Well, it, that's, just, that's just the point. They're defenceless. So, uh, you know, they require an escort to defend them. And if you don't get something uh, in place, what you'll have is a lot of traffic... Uh, building up and building up. And if you've ever been in the uh, Suez Canal, and uh, I've been there, you, it, traffic can get stacked up very, very, very uh, greatly there. You know, hundreds and hundreds of vessels uh, can be put in a, a waiting status, and it could very much be a, a disruption to global trade, especially those countries that depend on uh, goods and also uh, the Arab countries that need to ship out oil. Uh, so if it gets uh, uh, plugged up, so to speak, uh, uh, that will disrupt even countries that are not targeted by the Houthis. So it's really unacceptable by any world standards or legal oh. standards. Uh, so the, the question is, how fast will it take the West and other countries to coalesce and do something about it? I know the Saudis have had a, a bit of a, you know, a pause in their the conflict with the Houthis. And uh, they're reluctant to get that, uh, endanger that agreement. Uh, but at the same time, the U.S. and other countries have to act in their interests. Mm. They have to take the advice of the Saudis also, obviously. But they cannot, uh, you cannot just ignore this and let, uh, let Houthis just target 
uh, commercial shipping from from other countries. It's just it's just intolerable, and I don't think it will stand. And I think within the next couple of weeks, you'll see uh, some more decisive steps uh, to put a stop to it. We shall see what does happen for the moment. Uh, retired Colonel William Keegan, thanks so much for joining us, sir.